So, the peak uh, 8, 8, 18F instructions, so as I was telling that there are 77 assembly language instructions uh, in peak, earlier peak versions uh, they are 32 to 35 instructions and then this instruction set most of the instructions are 16 bit uh, word length and there are 4 instructions that are 32 bit long. So, that way those instructions are more powerful, but uh, otherwise the instructions are uniform. So, they are 16 bit wide, but only 4 instructions they are 32 bit wide. If you look into this instructions, then the first category of instruction is the copy instructions or move instructions. They, so, it is move copy 8 bit number into W register. So, the uh, format is like move LW 8 bit. So, uh, so move literal. So, it is like move literal to W register 8 bit number. So, this is some, some sort of move immediate. So, uh, the coding will be like this that uh, 00001110 and then this is the 8 bit number that we have. Okay. Then uh, another interesting uh, instruction may be that copy contents of W register into port C. So, the, this is uh, so for moving uh, to some uh, moving the content of this W register onto some memory location. So, move W F. Okay. So, this is working register uh, port C comma A. So, this uh, so it will go to port C and here the A will indicate that the port C is in the current access bank. So, that is the current bank selection whatever is there. So, it will be there, it will be used for that and 82 hex is the port C address. So, this is the um, 82 hex. So, it will be uh, useful there and rest of the bits are uh, fixed for uh, this operation. We will try to see one very simple program. So, we will try to write a few instructions to light up alternate LEDs at port C. Okay. So, in the hardware connection, so we will have this uh, port C and is a bidirectional port input and in, it can be configured as input or output. So, we have to set it for output mode for display and then uh, also logic 1 will turn on an LED. So, that is the structure. So, for this we will try to write the program. So, this is the structure. So, from the 8 bit data bus uh, it will come to port C and we have got this registers uh, register and then uh, register and then the LED. So, uh, if you put a 1 here, so the, the corresponding LED will glow and there is a uh, tri state uh, latch enable uh, signal the TRISC is a special register. So, if you, if you want to enable port C, so you have to uh, enable this latch then only the values will be going to uh, output. So, ac actually this this port C has to be configured as either input or output. So, for that purpose this TRISC, so this has to be controlled. So, for the software side first we write logic 0 to TRISC register for configuring port C as an output port okay. and then we will move 55 hex to alternate LEDs. So, how do we do this? So, move LW00 so, W register will be loaded with the immediate word 0 and then move W F try TRISC. So, this will set port C as output port okay. and now after that I can put the byte uh, 55 hex onto port C. So, just like uh, 8051, 8051 for uh, um, uh, output we did not need to configure it, but uh, whenever we are trying to uh, con configure it as input, so we had to write a uh, 0 first on to the write a 1 to the port first, so that the uh, latch was getting disabled. So, here also similar thing that port C, the, the port C is a bidirectional port as we see here. So, for uh, programming it is an output mode, so you should have this TRISC latch set to uh, set, uh, so that uh, we can uh, get this. Uh, uh, we uh, this latch is uh, we we'll configure this port C in the output mode. So, if you send a 0 to TRISC then it will set up the output uh, port C as output mode. If you uh, send it as uh, all 1 then it will be configuring it as uh, input mode. Then we are outputting this 55 hex. So, that is uh, for uh, the alternating LEDs will be on alternate LEDs will be on and then this uh, pattern. So, this is moved on to the W register. So, you cannot put this pattern directly onto port C. So, you have to put it onto W register and then move W F port C. So, this will turn on the LEDs because this 55 hex will go to port C and it will be turned on and then it will go to this uh, sleep. So, that is the power down mode. So, it will uh, so it is assumed that it will be after turning it on. So, it is going to power down mode. 
So, if you want that uh, they should blink, then you should put a delay here and then uh, do a shifting of this um, W register from 55 hex, it should come to the status AA hex and that way you can put a loop around this, so that you can get uh, alternate blinking of LEDs. That is not uh, shown in this program. So, for an embedded application you see that uh, this is going to be useful because we have got uh, this, uh, uh, this microprocessor unit program memory and data registers, so that are there. Then we have got this AD converters are there, so AD converter we has got analog 0 channel. Uh, so, like this is a typical example like we have connected one temperature sensor, one heater, fan and one LCD panel. Okay. So, it may be connected like this that this, uh, we have this uh, temperature sensor will sense one analog value. Okay. So, that is uh, this uh, that is connected to the AD converter and for that connection we need to use this RA0. Uh, pin of this port A. So, port A uh, I am connecting it in the input mode and this temperature sensor is connected to RA0 which is, uh, is a multiplexed operation, RA0, AN0 is a multiplexed operation. So, it gets it here. So, whenever this uh, AD converter uh, finishes converting one te temperature value, uh, so this uh, the voltage value that is coming uh, from the sensor into the digital value, it will send an interrupt to the microprocessor. So, the, the MPU unit and when it is uh, get after getting that interrupt, so it will be uh, it, it will be uh, it will be reading this 10 bit value of the AD converter into this processor. And then depending upon the temperature, we may like to turn on the heater or turn on the fan. If the temperature is uh, above the uh, setting uh, the set value, then the fan should be turned on and if it is below the set value, the heater should be turned on. So, that can be controlled by uh, these two bits RA5 and RA6 of this port and accordingly uh, the bits D5 and D6 can be controlled uh, up, uh, uh, by the microprocessor for port A. Port B and port C, so they are used for this LCD interface. In the port B we send the pattern that we want to display and this uh, the, the other controls the, the, e, the RS and the read writes, these are the controls for the LCD. So, they are uh, coming from this RC lines, this port C, RC1, RC2 and RC3 bits. So, they will be controlling the uh, LCD panel. So, this way you can develop a very simple system using this peak microcontrollers or for that matter it, 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 it can be any other microcontroller, but we can design embedded systems uh, built around this uh, uh, microcontrollers and sensors. Okay. If so, the advantage is that ADC, timer. Uh, and this uh, LCD, so the, the, the sorry ADC timer and this uh, digital I/O, so they are all part of the microcontroller that helps in the design of the system. Okay. So after this, we we'll look into another uh, microcontroller, which is uh, known as the uh, which is known as the uh, AVR microcontroller. So this is also quite common. And this is uh, used uh, very much in the um, many of these uh, processors, uh, many of these uh, embedded system designs because of the same reason, because it is uh, one of the uh, powerful uh, microcontrollers that we have. So, and again there is a range of such microcontrollers, in the AVR series also you can find a range of such microcontrollers. So, AVR it stands for advanced virtual risk. Okay. So, this is uh, founders are Alf, Agil, Bogen and uh, Vegard Volen risk. So now they are act, they were actually two university student. So when they when they were student at NTH, they started uh, the thinking about this architecture. And later on, they developed uh, the structure and refined it into uh, into a uh, developed the company Atmel Norway. And then the Atmel company was founded by these two cheap architects. So this is one of the success stories of. Um, uh, the university projects uh, going into the product. So, as far as the microcontroller is concerned, so it follows Harvard architecture again. So, this is uh, program memory, uh, so this is uh, the CPU, so it is uh, connected, to, we can have program memory and data memory and this program memory and data memory, they will have their individual buses, so program memory uh, address bus and data bus and uh, pro data memory program address bus and data bus. So, this width values 14 bit, 12 bit, so they are they are varying like if you look into different series of AVR microcontrollers, then these uh, values will be varying 
accordingly we can have uh, different uh, structures. Now, this AVR microcontrollers they are a series of 8 bit RISC microcontrollers from Atmel. So, unlike uh, ARM which is a 32 bit uh, RISC architecture, so this AVR is an 8 bit RISC architecture. So, this is uh, so naturally the structure is going to be much simpler like all the operations if they are 8 bit operation then uh, naturally the hardware module hardware overhead will be less and possibly um, it will be uh, able to operate at a higher speed. So, they share the same instruction set as the basic CPU. So, all these uh, um, AVR series of microcontrollers they will be using the same set of uh, um, instructions uh, for uh, the, the as we had in the basic AVR microcontroller and they follow the Harvard architecture. 32 8 bit general purpose register. So, it has 32 8 bit general purpose registers. So, that is um, a large number of registers you see. So, um, so that is that makes it suitable for risk architecture and most instructions execute in a single clock cycle. So, which makes it faster among 8 bit microcontrollers. So, in a single clock cycle the entire instruction is executed. So, there will be uh, pipelining and parallelization whatever is there inside, but ultimately in a single clock cycle the entire instruction will be executed. So, architecture is very much optimized towards that. Mostly instructions execute in single clock cycle which may so, so that makes it better and this is efficient execution of compiled C code. So, this is another very interesting thing that uh, these AVR designers they did not expect the users to be uh, very proficient in uh, AVR assembly language programming. So, it was taken that ok um, it is uh, the you can write your program in C code and then uh, there will be efficient compilers which will compile this C code into AVR code and that uh, philosophy is followed by uh, many other companies particularly if you look into say the uh, digital signal processors. So, there also you will find that the programs are written in high level language only and then through this uh, efficient compilation. So, they are translated into the machine language. So, it is no more uh, like uh, hand uh, hand written program. So, they are all uh, automated programs generated from high level language. So, AVR is a family of 8 bit microcontrollers with large range of variants uh, differing in size of the program memory, size of the EEPROM memory, number of uh, IO pins, then number of uh, on chip features such as user and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the universal asynchronous receiver transmitter and the ADC. Smallest of this series is ATI AT Tiny 11. Okay. So, that is that has got 1 kilo flash ROM, there is no RAM and there are 6 I O pins. So, this is the simplest possible processor that we have and the large one such as Atmega 128, it has got 128 kilo flash, 4 kilobyte of RAM, 53 I O pins and lots of on chip features like ADC, USART and all that. So, there will be many such features that are on chip. So, we will try to see a broad overview of all these processors. So, if you look into say this um, uh, 90S1200, it is a 20 pin chip with a flash of 1 kilo and EEPROM of 64 bytes and there is no RAM. Then 90S2313, so it has got uh, other features as EEPROM size is doubled and there is a 128 RAM locations are introduced. Coming to this uh, mega series, so mega 603 or mega 103 it has got uh, 64 pin it is a 64 pin chip 128 kilo of flash space 4096 uh, bytes of eeprom so 4 kilo eeprom and then we have got 40 the 4 kilo of ram space so that is uh, one of the very advanced one so this way we can have a series of uh, at mega processors or uh, this uh, avr processors and their capacities will be varying depending upon the series that we use so, we will look into one uh, some such uh, representative microcontrollers. So, the, this discussion is for AT90S2313 series of microcontrollers. So, this is a microcontroller of AVR series. Okay. So, it is a high performance low power risk architecture. It is a low voltage. So, the operating voltage can be 2.7 volt to 6 volt. So, this is another very good thing. So, you can have a wide range of supply voltage on which the processor will work. Maybe when you are operating at 2.7 volt, you do not get the same performance as when you operate at the 6 volt, 
but this power and performance their trade off can be there like you can you, you may want you may be satisfied with a lower degree of performance but the power consumption should be low so in that case you can operate it uh, operate it as a, at a lower voltage and the other other, other side so you may want that performance should be good and i do not matter, uh, mind giving some more power so then you can operate at a higher voltage the high performance cmos uh, 8 bit microcontroller so this is it is built on cmos technology uh, and it is uh, uh, based on the avr risk architecture since the microcontroller for avr series so it is also using the harvard architecture okay so that is um, uh, the same so features so it has got 2 kilobyte of in system programmable flash that where you can have uh, this um, uh, program memory then there is 28 byte of eeprom okay so you can have some eeprom where you can uh, have only 28 bytes are there but the essential values can be programmed there then we have got 128 bytes of sram that is for the scratch pad purpose 15 general purpose io line basically that io ports then 32 general purpose working registers so large number of registers we have got timer counters with uh, 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 flexible timer counter with compare modes so we can uh, we can compare the value of these uh, timers and counters with some preset values then internal and external interrupts so interrupts are there programmable serial universal asynchronous receiver transmitter the uart then we have got uh, uh, one 8 bit timer counter then uh, then we can have one 16 bit timer counter so one 8 bit timer counter one 16 bit timer counter so we have got analog comparator so this is another very important thing so many times we need to uh, have two analog signals and we need to compare between them so in normal uh, processing that we have seen so far so what we have to do is we have to take uh, those we have to convert those analog values into digital and uh, by by means of some analog to digital converter and then using that converter we have to uh, use the we have to uh, run the program so we have to we have to compare at the digital level but uh, if we can do it at the analog level itself then this additional uh, ad converters are not necessary so that is there so we can have this analog comparator in the avr architecture then there is on chip oscillator and clock circuitry for clock generation so you have got on chip oscillator so if you uh, so we don't need the crystals and all that so you can uh, uh, the oscillator will be able to generate the clock so we'll be looking into this avr architectures particularly we'll look into the registers the instruction set io ports memory and the cpu structure so registers there are two types of registers one category is called general purpose other is called special purpose so general purpose register there are 32 general purpose registers having storage capacity of 8 bits so named r0 r1 up to r31 so these are 32 general purpose registers and out of that register r0 to r15 and r16 to r31 they are different so they are as if uh, they can uh, they are two different banks and some something like that can store both data and addresses unlike other uh, category where all the registers are not equally capable like in 8051 you see that we have got uh, the registers but for indirect addressing we can only use r0 and r1 or if you look into the 8085 then we have got this hl uh, pair that can be used as memory pointer but not all of them so you see that this uh, general purpose registers in case of avr architecture so they can be uh, all these registers can be used as data or address and there are three special purpose registers program counter stack pointer and status register so these are the special purpose registers that we have in the avr architecture so pointer register so there are three additional uh, 16 bit register pairs uh, registers 26 to 31 so they are called the pointer register so are uh, so they are called x y and z pointers so pointer x is this one so this is consisting of register number 26 and 27 so they are uh, this, this gives me the 16 bit address and this is they are called this is the x pointer similarly we have got y pointer which is uh, another 16 bit consisting of the registers are uh, register 28 and 29 and z register consisting of the registers 30 and 31 so read write from address x and they don't change the pointer so if you if you uh, so if you use this x pointer in your instruction 
then it will be uh, using this uh, pair as the memory location address from where uh, the value should be read. So, we have got three such registers x, y and z. So, if you have got pointer uh, pointer supported in high level language so to convert it into uh, assembly code this pointer registers can be used. Then the status register, so we have got a um, one status register S reg that has got 8 uh, bit long flip flop and each bit uh, 8 bit uh, uh, 8 bit uh, long register and each bit has got a different meaning. So, this i the most significant bit is the i bit which stands for global interrupt enable disable flag. Okay. So, so it is that i e or that e i bit or i e bit for different processors the global interrupt uh, interrupt enable okay so that bit then uh, the next bit is the t bit which is the transfer bit used by bld and bst instructions so they will, these are two special instructions that we will see later then h is the half carry flag so half carry flag is basically that auxiliary carry sort of thing so whenever there is a carry generated at the middle like if it is an 8 bit operation so from the fourth bit uh, from third bit to fourth bit if there is a carry generated then it will be uh, um, uh, this half carry bit will be set. Then there is S bit, so this is for signed test instruction set. So uh, uh, this, is, this is a sign bit. So if the uh, if the content is sign uh, the negative, then the S bit will be negative, will be one. Otherwise, it will be uh, zero. Then the V bit is a two's complement overflow indicator. So like when we are doing the operation, so there may be some overflow in the two's complement notation uh, representation. So, that way it is that uh, overflow information. Then we have got the negative flag. So, this is uh, yes, uh, so if the operation uh, result is negative, then this bit will be set, then 0 flag and carry flag. So, they have got the standard meaning this n, z, c, and v. So, they have got the uh, normal meaning, but others they have got some special meanings. So, then we have got the stack pointer. So, uh, it has got the concept of stack. So, in ARM we did not have stack uh, by default, so here, here we have. So, it is a 16 bit stack pointer, it holds address uh, in the data, uh, data space of area to save function call information. So, this is only holding the return addresses, okay. so they will be saved in the stack and that is in the data space, that will be saved in the data memory. So, the register structure is like this. So, we, so we have got this uh, address uh, 0, 0 to 1 f. So, we have got 32 such registers R 0 to R 31 and out of that uh, say this uh, this register number 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So, they are this x, y, z uh, pointers. As far as memory is concerned, so memory can be th thought to be consisting of two parts program memory and data memory. So, program memory is uh, 1 kilo by 1 byte and uh, this uh, data memory is uh, 64, uh, it, it, it consists of that 32 general purpose working registers, 64 uh, uh, input output registers uh, and then we, we have got the SRAM part which is uh, 128 uh, locations of SRAM. So, that will be the data memory. So, program memory flash memory, so it has got 2 kilobytes of flash, there is out of then 128 bytes of in system programmable EEPROM program memory will be there. So, this is there, but this is used by the internal purpose. So, they are for internal function address uh, 16 bit and double word opcode. Uh, so, the, so, this 128 bytes, so they are used for uh, this uh, this 128 byte that we have, so they are used for uh, interrupt function addresses that is the, uh, uh, the vector table, the basically that interrupt vector table, so that is there. So, it is 16 bit and uh, 16 bit and double word opcode, so both 16 bit and 32 bit opcodes can be there and the static data table, so they can be there. So, so, this is another indicator that is whether we are going for a 16 bit instruction or 32 bit instruction that will be also uh, contained in that uh, EEPROM and also we have to we have to if there may be some static data table. So, they can also be a part of this uh, uh, in system programmable EEPROM, okay. but actual program memory is the flash memory. So, that is uh, the, the control the um, program that uh, this microcontroller will run 
so that will be there in the flash memory so these are actually some uh, for the 128 byte of eprom so this is, is the these are for internal system usage and uh, some static data tables can be put there on the other hand the data memory so it is uh, used for data as naturally it is separate from program memory so we have got this uh, um, uh, harvard architecture so program and data memories are separate then uh, this 128 bytes of sram so that is actually uh, making this data memory so registers are reassigned the 32 bit address space so 0021f so that is 32 locations are uh, um, uh, uh, th those registers will be uh, holding uh, this uh, um, a portion of the SRAM. So, 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 32 locations are uh, reserved for the registers. Then the I/O memory space it, it will contain 64 addresses for the CPU peripheral functions. So, 64 locations are dedicated for uh, um, uh, this control registers, timer counter, AD converter, other I/O functions. So, 64 locations are reserved for that. And this I/O memory can be accessed directly or as data space locations, and uh, the, the locations uh, those those uh, of the registers like dollar two zero to dollar five. So you can either mention them as the register or you can mention them as memory location. So this uh, this I/O memory part. So th this that is where you are accessing these timers, AD converters, and other I/O routines, other I/O modules. So that can be accessed both way. And stack is effectively allocated uh, in uh, general uh, uh, general data SRAM, and the stack size is limited by the size of the SRAM. So SRAM size is it is 128 bytes. So out of that, 32 bytes are gone for the registers, 64 bytes are gone for the uh, I/O memory space. So, so total 96 uh, bytes are spent for uh, this by the by the system. So you are left with only uh, 32 bytes for the stack. Okay, so this uh, I, so in this so if it is if it is uh, uh, SRAM is limited to 128 bytes, so you can uh, initialize this your stack pointer to location 97, and from that point onward your stack will start and it can go up to uh, 128 only. So the AVR instruction set, so it has got 118 powerful instructions and most of the uh, instructions they are single cycle execution instruction. All arithmetic operations are done on registers R0 to R31 and mostly instructions take on one uh, cycle for execution. So uh, as we have already said that uh, it will be uh, all arithmetic operations are done on registers. So, RJ, so you cannot have so R0 to R31 so uh, in some sense you can say okay they are memory locations as well because R0 to R31 is in the data RAM. So that way it is fine, but it is uh, uh, it is uh, the operands are register operands. Okay. So all so this is similar to uh, other processors that we have seen. Where this, for example, in ARM processor we have said that uh, all the operations are uh, having registers are operand. So here also the same philosophy is followed. But of course you can say that okay, this is a, a, the RAM is also part of the processor. So register and memory does not have any difference. 